cetera, cultural and religious rights. What is civic rights? Yes. So same thing to have a civilized life. Okay, civilized life. That is the freedom which are given or the rights which are granted to an individual to have a civic life. Okay, so civic life may what is freedom? Right to life, right to speech, right to freedom of association, etc. Article 19, if you can remember. So those are the aspects of the civic rights. I hope the point is clear. And these all rights, the nature is in order to put the limitation on the state that even if the state mandate is given to them, they are they should not enter into the okay domain of some of the rights which are required for the fundamental existence of human being why the why the hell at all we create the state from the anarchy to the state anarchy because anarchy we were at least living there we were living but we want more than just an existence we want more convenience therefore we have created the state so once we created the state it means that they, uh, the state has come for the uh, for the happiness of human beings it is not there to take the life life was already there so some of the rights which are guaranteed and that they put the restriction on the human beings. I hope point is clear. So what is the theory of rights? What is fundamental rights? What is rule of law? And what is constitutionalism? What is constitutionalism? Just in one line. What is constitutionalism? Is it the same as that of the rule of law? Yes, because rule of law establishes the rule by law. Okay, it, it, it is against the uh, theory of rule of arbitrariness okay it is against the theory of arbitrariness there will not be an arbitrariness so whatever the rule of law it has to be established by constitution and when we follow the constitution it is called as constitutionalism this is otherwise you can remember this is a theory called as limited government okay this is theory of limited government what is the word limited mean here what is the word limited mean doctrine of limited government this is called as doctrine of limited government what is a limited? They are limited by the rights. Okay, they can only do what they are supposed to do. What is written in the constitution? Beyond that, they should not intervene into the rights of individual. So this is called as doctrine of limited government. This doctrine was given by John Locke, and therefore he is known as father of liberalism. Okay, he has ensured that the people, even if under the state, it does not mean that state is despot state is a monstrous state is everything okay it means that people reserve some of the rights and therefore it is known as the theory of limited government understood so with this uh, a basic introduction now we move on to the specific rights in indian constitution that is about the fundamental rights a anybody has any doubt so far please do ask otherwise we can move yes any question so far no have you understood anything that I have discussed so far? Huh? pura matlab yorker to gaya nahi to bouncer to gaya. Have you understood? Okay. So now let's move on to the fundamental rights. Uh, again, we will see that some of the characters of fundamental rights first, and then we can move into the. Okay, that is about the uh, special provisions. So special features. Special features of fundamental rights. Special features of fundamental rights. So first and the foremost is these rights are justiciable, okay, which is different from these are justiciable. This is different from preamble. This is different from directive principles of state policy or fundamental duties. Okay, justiciable. So why you call it justiciable? Because if the fundamental rights are violated, then you can move to the yes, Supreme Court or High Court directly. Okay, this is under Article 32 and this is under Article 226 and they will provide the writ okay writs through which they can enforce your rights it's also very important to understand that justiciable means only when your right is violated only when your right is violated then you can go to the supreme court and high court it means that somebody you should 
you should objectively feel that my right is violated. You should provide certain substance and objective, uh, objective evidences. Then you go to the court and tell them my right is violated and they will enforce it. What does it mean? It means that if nobody is violating your right, you cannot go to the court, I am not feeling my right are not there and etc. Okay, so the violation of the right is a condition for enforcement. It means that they are already there. You, there, there is no special consideration that you don't feel like that there are right and uh, so therefore the positive intervention has to be there by the Supreme Court and High Court. Understood this part? So only when the violation you, you can go to the Supreme Court or the High Court. That is a justiciable. Second aspect of uh, right is, yes, what are the other features? They can be, yes, the rights are not absolute. Even if they are fundamental rights, they are not absolute. What does it mean they are not absolute? There are restrictions on the right. Even if rights are there, there are restrictions. There are restrictions on the rights. Now, what are these restrictions? Restriction can be in, seen in two ways. There are certain restrictions which are mentioned in the Constitution itself or within the Part 3 itself. Like say, for example, when we'll discuss Article 19, we will see that they have mentioned the fundamental rights also and there and there itself they have mentioned the, yes, restriction also. Second form of restriction can be Supreme Court and High Court through different judicial pronouncement okay or parliament through the constitution constitutional amendments parliament through the constitutional amendments or different laws and supreme court and high court through the different verdicts okay they have also gone for seeing the okay if at all any restriction can be put understood so many a times the parliament over a period of time has gone into like amending the some of the some of the features of constitution in order to restrict. In fact, one of the example is they have removed altogether also at the times. Okay, what is the that time? That is right to property, okay, which was a right but it was altogether removed. Then there are many of the rights which have been like amended over a period of time in order to put larger restrictions also. Okay, so restrictions, so they are not absolute, they are restricted. Third thing is, can they be amended can fundamental rights be amended or removed also? Can fundamental rights be amended? Yes, they can be amended. Uh, we will see in detail later on in Article 30, but at this point of time, just I'll say that fundamental rights can be altered. Altered, it can be modified, it can be changed, it can be repealed also. Okay, it can be changed, it can be repealed also. And this amendment, but there are, it's not put as a simple law process, okay? The parliament, they have to go through the constitutional amendment. So constitutional amendment under article 368, it means that uh, they require the special majority. So it has not been kept that simple that if the, uh, a particular government enjoys the majority and they can go for it. So constitutional amendment, second restriction is, there's a restriction in the form of the procedure has been kept little dif difficult, okay, so as to fundamental right, otherwise should not be amended. But yes, in special circumstances, they can be. Second limitation is, if any of the fundamental rights hampering the basic structure of the constitution, they cannot do so, and there will be third, there will be a judicial review. Even if parliament can go and amend, but again, judiciary will see that if it is hampering the basic structure. If it is hampering the basic structure, they can reinstate back uh, the fundamental rights in its original form. Okay. So what we can say that there is a balance. There is a balance because you have to see the individual uh, freedom and the larger social goal also. Okay, so some of the larger social goals, say for example, individual freedom, right to property was there, but then for the larger social goal, for the socialist goal, we have gone for the abolition. So sometimes the flexibility has been given in order to amend them, okay, to the constitution, uh, to the parliament, but again, there is a caveat, that is a basic structure will not be violated, and if it is so, the judiciary will take the review, and it will reinstate back. Okay, so the fundamental rights, there are restrictions, they can be amended. Fourth is, 
fundamental rights can be suspended. Suspended means a temporary period. Okay, they can be suspended also. Okay, for a short period of time. This can happen. What is a suspension? This can happen during the emergency. Yes, this can happen during the emergency and this can in the national emergency. Which right do you know that which cannot be suspended at all? That's it. Article 21 and Article 22. Okay, in any circumstances this right never be suspended. Article 21 and 22. 20 and 22, sorry. 20 and 20, sorry, 20 and 21. Okay, this can never be suspended. First thing, with regard to suspension. Second thing, Article 19. There is something related to Article 19. Article 19 can be suspended in the national emergency, but only when the national, uh, what are the national emergency provision in which three cases national emergency can be applied? Yes, war, external aggression, and internal disturbances. No, now earlier it is called as internal disturbances, now it is called as on rebellion. So you can suspend Article 19 only in two cases, if the national emergency is through the war and external aggression. External aggression, you cannot suspend this. And this is an automatic suspension. Mind well, the one of the feature of 19 is, if the national emergency through the war and external aggression, then you need not, the president should not have to mention specifically your 19 got suspended. Okay, it will automatically get suspended and the moment the national emergency get revoked, uh, if it is on these two grounds, then those fundamental rights will be reinstated back. But in case of rest of the rights uh, uh, beyond 20 and 21, okay, the president has to mention in a special order that these are the rights which are going to be suspended for this number of period of time and for this part. So these number of rights for this particular part of India or whole part of India and for this long. Okay, so they will tell about which rights, they will tell about which part of India and they will tell about that is uh, till what time. Okay, so this will be uh, not an automatic and this is an automatic suspension. So what we are seeing is the fundamental rights, although they are justiciable, uh, they are restricted also, they can be changed also they can be suspended also, okay? So these are some of the feature. Apart from that, there are certain other things like these fundamental rights, most of fundamental rights, most of fundamental rights are nature of, nature of restrictions imposed on state. Nature of restrictions imposed on state. This is what I have been telling for last half an hour, that is they are the restrictions. They are the restrictions on the states. Whereas the directive principle of state policy, they are they are the guidelines. Okay, they are the guidelines. So they are telling that state, you please do this. And here state ko kaha ja hai, you please do not do this. Okay, do not enter into. If the question will be like this, the fundamental rights, the nature, the fundamental rights are of restriction of the state, all the fundamental rights. The answer is not correct. The most, this is what is, yesterday also I told you, please mind the extreme words in the statement. If the statement is saying that all the fundamental rights puts the restriction on the state, that statement is wrong. Okay, all fundamental rights do not put restriction. Some are negatively connoted, negatively connoted, they put the restriction, but they are, uh, some are positive connotation. Positive connotation, like say for example, right to education. Is there any restriction or is there uh, the sort of a guideline? That's a sort of a guideline. That's not a restriction on the state. So if all the fundamental rights are of restriction, that answer is wrong. Okay, you should not uh, make it right because many of the fundamental rights, in fact, why that only 21, within the 15, there are certain clauses, like 15-3 clause for the children and the women, then for the weaker section of the society, so on and so forth. So there are also positive guidelines also. Uh, in order to, that is, establish the political democracy or the socio-economic democracy. Understood? So the word most should be uh, kept in mind. Uh, otherwise, they are the restrictions. Sixth is, fundamental rights are available, maximum rights are available to Indian citizen. But 
they can some of the rights are available to foreigners also okay some of the rights are available to foreigners also at this point of time i am not going to tell which are there and which are not there because when we will see the details at the end of the conclusion of fundamental rights we will take the list we will be in position to appreciate it better then okay so for some rights are available exclusively to the citizen whereas the some rights are available to the foreigners agar aapko chahiye to foreigners ke liye kon kon se article 14 okay then article 20 21